Today, we're gonna paint a dreamy, fast little seagull a la prima for fresh, clean, minimal looking outcome. Thank you to Cindy Nord for sharing this little muse on pexels.com. I'll be painting this with Mia gouache. Here's my new Mia gouache paints they sent me and this thing is heavy. <laughs> it's $50, but you get a lot of paint. I've been wanting to try out gouache and when Mia offered to send me this set to try, I jumped at the chance. I did paint with a lot more water than is typical, when you paint with gouache, but I was going for a very whimsical, splashy look, so I went for it. Be sure to check out the links in the description if you would like to buy this paint. I painted this sequel four times until I had it just right, so if you would like to see that footage and over 90 other tutorials you get instant access to, depending on what tier you choose, I'd love you to join my Patreon. I will make this line drawing and reference available also on my Facebook group, Watercolor Animals with Rachel, so be sure to find that link in the description below. And if you want to paint this with watercolor, I will give paint color suggestions throughout the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, using Hannah Mule now, I'm just looking for scraps of paper in my little paper drawer, whatever will work. And Hannah Mule was there, and this is Hannah Mule the collection. So this is a really nice paper. This is probably like a 12 by eight. The larger you paint, the splashier you're gonna be able to get. This paint. So like I said, I'm going to glop this on, just very gloppy, and then I'm going to go in with a bunch of water and smear it around. Mm -hmm. So here you could use cobalt blue. It would be really pretty and maybe drop a little bit of ultramarine, <laughs> French ultramarine, and maybe even a tiny little bit of Windsor Violet just to have more than one color in the sky. It would be really pretty. But look, this is almost clear water that I've got here and I'm just letting the paint do what it wants to do and smear around. But you could do the same exact thing with cobalt. Just put cream consistency cobalt down and just smear it around and let it do what it's going to do. Every time I painted this, it looked completely different. Um, just make sure you have some light areas that kind of look like clouds, roughly, and other areas are darker. I wanted the paint to be darker up next to the white parts of the bird. I really wanted to pop that part of the contrast up, so I made that part darker. So I'm using these gouache paints very much like watercolor, but I love how they granulate out. I just love that. So I'm going to go with it. Then I'm going to get some of this color, I believe. And I didn't want to uncover all these paints and I didn't want to get too crazy with a bunch of colors. So I used that purple, that burgundy, the bright orange for his legs. For the orange of his legs, you could just paint those with Oriole and, and Naphthol Red. Also some purple, I think. Here you could just use Windsor Violet, it'd be really pretty. Milk consistency and then just kind of move it around with some water. And I definitely want that to bloom out. So I let that shadow that I'm painting, the purple shadow, to bloom and touch the wet sky that's still wet. And I just think that's always a pretty effect when painters do that. These. And the reference photo actually gives you a lot of interesting colors already, the blues and the purples and the feathers that you can really see in the reference photo. So I just kind of roughly followed that and tried to paint negatively around a few feathers to give the look of feathers. So you'll see a few feathers that I paint. I just make sure to remember to paint around. This warm area like that. 
If you want to use masking to mask out a few feather shapes, that would give more shape to the feathers. I'm going to put some stronger. Try not to waste this paint, but. Where I'm using this burgundy color, you could use burnt sienna mixed with a little naphthol red, maybe. That would be pretty. I'm going to get some purple now and paint into this wet area. And then. Let this bleed a little. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to do a fun part. I'm going to do these fun orange legs. Don't you just love them? It's definitely my favorite thing about this picture. Is these great. legs this bird has. Mm. I'm using my Princeton Aqua Elite for long because I can get such a good point on it. And again, you can paint this with a mix of naphthol red and oreolan and change up your colors a little bit and add a little more yellow here, a little more red there to really make the legs even more interesting than mine because I just used this flat orange. I didn't want to open all the colors. I was just being, I don't know why, I just... Love the angularity. I just like to conserve paint, even though this thing weighs two pounds. Of them, I really think they're just great. So try to get the changing width of the legs in too. Thinner here, thicker there. All right, so I'm liking this so much more than my first attempt, my um, last few attempts. I just wanted to keep it really, 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 um, I don't know, a lot looser. I just thought that green was a great counterpoint to the purples. You can use whatever color you want. Permanent green light would be gorgeous. And I want to attach different aspects of the painting together a little bit, but not too much. And I want things to bleed and just be loose and dreamy and simple and very straightforward. And not overdone. <laughs> it's the main thing that I was going for. So this is looking a lot more kind of uh, the vision that I was having. I do need my little mixer thing here so I can get some paint mixed up and then by the way that's the first time I've used that little bowl there but it's actually something you put under a plant that I got at Target it it was five dollars or less and it's a ceramic just white um what do you call them the things that you put under plants so that was perfect for using to mix this and then I wanted a few drips leading the eye down into the bird You could do a lot more drips because, hey, waves are splashy. I'm going to put some of this. I'm just going to float it in. Just really, really loosely here. And then maybe some black. So this is cream consistency paint that I'm painting onto the paper that's still a little wet and that makes it bloom out really in a dreamy way. So you could use burnt sienna there with a little red in it or with a little violet in it. It's pretty. And here I'm painting with very tea consistency, watery, just a gray, just a very delicate wave that doesn't call too much attention to the bird, but kind of points the eye in the direction of the bird. Picture here. All right. We got an orange beak. We need to get in here. You know what? I might use, just to have a little bit extra control, I'll use my size four long Princeton Aqua Elite. And I don't need a lot here. I mean, this paint would last me a really long time. 
So <laughs> I don't know if you'd ever, if unless you're painting a lot of gouache paintings, good night. This would keep you in paint for a long time. All right, so I, I just put kind of a real thick bit there and now I'm gonna put in. So yeah, if you have 50 bucks to spare, this paint will last you forever. It's just fun to play with. And for 50 bucks for this much paint, you don't feel guilty using it. Put in this eye here. This is just straight black eye. Not much to it because it's just a black kind of triangle with a rounded side on it. But I'm going to get some grain, just try to make it a bit of an eyelid here. So I just dotted out the excess paint to get less. And just blot that out and blend. To get less paint in my brush. Blot it out some more. But it was still a little too dark, but that's okay. I just went with it. But if you get that little eyelid, do you see how I did that? I think that's a really nice little detail. And then I'm going to get some just black or some of these little black feathers mom. yeah baby i love you i love you too no what mom what baby dad let me widen the front seat he did yeah well that's fun did you say oh thank you daddy yeah All right, sorry for that interruption. I left it in because I think it's cute, but he went on to have quite the conversation with me. So I am going to do full voiceover for this next little bit. And I'm just using kind of calligraphic marks here and there. I could even I could have been even more swishy and gotten the line thinner here, thicker there, more calligraphic for those little wings. So just have fun playing with that. Little scribbly wings are really fun. Um, the little black details and just don't overdo it. If you put too much, it'll just, it'll get too cluttered looking, but just put in a few and make them really angular. And I'm using about milk to cream consistency paint here because I wanted it to be super dark to give the birds some shape. So you can get your bird pretty darn splashy and then just make sure that the few parts that are really in sharp contrast, like where the whites of like the back of the neck meets the blue sky, pay attention to getting those shapes right. And then the viewers, I will believe you about the rest of the splashy, um, just abstract way of painting the rest of the bird. Put in a few shadows under the feet to ground him. You don't need much. And it'll be so fun to see what you guys do with this. Some of you will probably do a lot more. Some of you will probably do a lot less. I do have three other paintings. So if enough people ask me to demonstrate the other three, I might share the rest of the footage anyway. Um, I can do that. Also remember when painting wing, um, waves, they're just lines. There's a line of white and then there's a line of green and then there's another line of white. And the edges are really... Um, very irregular because of course they're crashing waves. So waves are pretty easy to paint, I think. But anyway, this is my um, little fine liner. It's a 005 Prismacolor archival art pen to put in some scribbles. A really easy way to sign paintings is with these Fugnesuke Tombow calligraphy pens and they are archival, they're really high quality ink. And they're for calligraphy so you can get some pretty effects with them. All right, this was my favorite seagull painting I did. I loved how I left it a little unfinished. I love that first wash always when I'm painting and I always hate to cover it up. And this painting gave me the chance to just let that first wash 
shine through. My very first attempt is that one in the top right. It's still my very, very favorite, but I didn't get it on camera. I might finish it just because I love that one so much. It just the waves granulated out so perfectly. The splash is next to his beak. We're just so perfect. And they just did what I wanted them to do. And I wasn't even thinking about what I was doing. And then this one here, I think it got too busy, but it's still fun. And this one was a lot bigger and I had to crop it down because it got too busy too. But I liked it after I cropped it a lot better. So you can do that if you don't like your outcome, just crop it to what you like. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Now go watercolor your world.